So first, let me thank Bess, Matt, Mike, and Rex for their very kind words. You know, I've gotten a lot from Northridge. I got a degree. I got one of my best business opportunities after the Northridge earthquake. I got the fine association of my sister-in-law, Professor Kalavid, who is the chair of the physics department. But maybe best of all what I got, I met my first wife at a sales management class, and I have two sons over there that are the byproduct of Northridge. You know, I took a circuitous route, and uh, I'm not a likely candidate for a kid to get a college degree. When I was age 10, my father said, by then I still didn't read and write, he looked at me and said, Paul, what are you going to do for a job? I said, I'll be an entrepreneur. You don't need to read and write if you're one of those guys. He said, how are you going to get contracts with customers? I said, I'll hire somebody to do that. He said, well, you might have to know how to read and write to hire your first person. I said, I'll figure that out when I get there. So there are three defining things I can say, educational opportunities that got me here tonight. And I want to thank this school because I'm both honored and humbled to have this award and also congratulate my fellow honorees. And I wouldn't be here tonight if not for these three opportunities. Because by high school, as you saw the pitch with the long hair and beard, people like that usually didn't graduate in the 70s. <laughs> but luckily for me, in Long Island, they had a thing called vocational training. So they took kids like me, and they put me through a program. It was the first time, because I still did not read and write well, it was the first time that I ever learned that learning can be incredible. It's the first time that I actually had teachers who understood and understood what my skills were. And I left that vocational training with an opportunity in California. And when they asked, do you want to go to California? This was a big company, Lockheed. I had two responses, when and where. And I don't think a college education is necessarily for everybody, as I think vocational school fills an important part of what is needed in our society. But for me, when I was there, the loving voice of my parents that I wouldn't hear when I was home but had to be 3,000 miles away to first hear, they always said to me, an education is something somebody can't take away from you. So I had heard about the community colleges, and I went down to Valley College. And lucky for me, they did a thing called an English entrance exam. And after taking that exam, my first class was a class that taught nouns, verbs, and adjectives. <laughs> but by then, I, having had my first great learning experience and teachers that I enjoyed being with, I was able to comprehend what those things were. And the point to the community college system is it's designed and built for remediation and then to transport kids beyond that. It was also in community college that I got the chance to figure out what I wanted to do. And by the time I left community college, it was clear to me I wanted to be a business person with no vision or even thought of making it to a four-year college. It was Northridge's annual visit to the community colleges to make the school accessible. And it was a 15-minute conversation that changed my life because three months later, I was enrolled at CSUN that fall. It was in CSUN, and none of my problems changed, my, lear my uh, learning challenges. But what I got out of CSUN was confidence. What I got was the understanding that I could take information and assimilate it. And when I left Northridge, I left with an incredible level of confidence. And throughout the years, when people in the conversation would avail itself, my first comment was, I got a great education at Northridge. In large part, the, I represent that population of students who go at night school. And it was in those night classes that you get that dialogue and interaction with peers, because if you're going to class at 7 o'clock at night, you're not going there to screw around. You're usually going there to learn. So it was some years later, after I had had some business success, that I kept getting a telemarketing call from Northridge, the Alum Association. So they were doing a good job. 
And it was about the 10th call. I said, I better pick up the phone. You know, somebody who's that relentless and that committed to getting a hold of me, being a fellow salesperson, you pay them homage. I picked up the phone and I donated. That donation led to two people showing up in my office, Matt Rennett and, at the time, the dean of the school, Professor uh, Bill Jennings. First of all, with a last name like Jennings, I figured there was an immediate bond. <laughs> so they had come in. <clears throat> they had a, you know, a whole you know, spiel ready. I preempted them. Within the first 10 minutes, I said, guys, where do you sign me up, and how do I get back involved in the school? Because I want to give back. I've gotten much from Northridge. And over the years, you know, one of the businesses I had was I put phones in prisons. And the irony for me was when things like email were coming about and the ability to give inmates alternatives, I would always say to these brainiacs that were trying to strategize this, guys, you don't get it. This population, 70% of uh, inmates are learning disabled who don't know how to read and write. The telephone is their only connection. And it was that contrast to understand in our society of what can be taken away or never given to you versus what I've gotten, and that is accessibility to opportunity and education. And my son's significant other uh, recently said, I want to go to Northridge and be a teacher. And my comment, as I have said to young people who want to be teachers, I probably have said this 100 times in the last 20 years, that's an honorable profession. <laughs> Having gotten involved with schools, I can say that my belief system is that the educational profession, professional, they are the foundation to our society. They're the ones who instill in our kids that gift of how to feed their curious minds. It is they who, frankly, underpaid and underappreciated that give us all the opportunity, because without education, there is no opportunity. And it's the education that allows us to succeed, to engage life, and to get the most meaning out of each of our lives. So for that reason, I am internally indebted to Northridge, and the kids that, because I am not an exception to who goes through Northridge. Northridge is accessible to kids who don't necessarily have the luxury or the affordability, but it captures the kids that have grit and determination. When I have had the opportunity to be a professor of the day at the school, when I look at the kids in front of me, it isn't where they are on the road at that moment, it's how far they have traveled to get to that place on the road. And what I do know is based on the education that they will get at Northridge, they will get a long journey down the road. Thank you.